Hello and welcome to this video uh, on using Control Freak and Playmaker together inside of Unity. As the, uh, the title screen says, we're going to have an introduction to what the Control Freak add-on is. And we're going to use it to have some on-screen controls to control behavior in objects, namely movement. All right, so we're going to take a look at first importing the required assets. I'll put a uh, a listing of where you should go as far as the time on the video if you want to skip importing the assets. If you already have the assets and have them imported, you can just skip to that part to see how to uh, combine them together. We'll set up very simple movement um, using get axis like we've done before in the course. We'll set up one of the built-in control freak prefab controllers to be on screen. And then we're going to connect those two together. Instead of using get axis, we'll use the axis on the controller and the buttons on the uh, control freak on screen controller to actually control the behavior that we at first implement using get axis. Okay, so you can see here we're starting off with just a blank Unity uh, project. I have uh, called it Playmaker and Control Freak. You can name it whatever, you know, this is, you don't even really need to make a project for this and you just follow this along and incorporate it into your own. So the first thing I need to do is import the uh, assets. So I'm going to import Playmaker first. Yeah, not like that. Let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and import the assets. So I'll bring in a playmaker first, straight down. Okay, let's install. And I'm going to go ahead and pause well, until this finishes importing. But before we get started here, let's check out this error that's coming up. And all it's saying is that it's looking for some things in standard assets which it cannot find. So, we need to go to the Asset Store and go ahead and go uh, download and install the standard assets. I already have them downloaded, I just need to import them. So, to get them, we just go to the search bar here, Standard Assets. list there. Scroll down till we get the import button. There we go. And we'll import this and after it finishes, let's click over here, import this stuff. And once this finishes, we'll be good to go to start. All right, Playmaker has now finished installing, and I'm going to install the next asset. 
and that is Control Freak 2, uh, version 2.2.4. Um, any version of Control Freak I'm pretty sure will work. We're not actually going to use Control Freak 2, but Control Freak 1 is included as part of this package. So we'll go ahead and import that. Should just take a second. I didn't think it would take this long to install these. Okay, and finally, we need to import the Playmaker actions for Control uh, Control Freak One. So we'll go ahead and import those. All right, so now we're ready. We have everything set up to make some uh, some behaviors with Playmaker and connect them uh, with the Control Freak controls. All right, with everything imported and set up, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly through here and set up some basic functionality and move around a cube. So I'm going to create a cube. Let's go ahead and switch this to 2D so I can see what's going on. And let's go ahead and increase the size. Our camera, make sure that our camera is looking at the cube so we can see exactly uh, what movement is going on. I want to go ahead and snap it here as well. I'll align it with my view so I have the square, the cube, right in the middle of my camera in my game view. So I'm going to select this cube and let's just call this our player and I'm going to open up the Playmaker editor and quickly set up some base behaviors for this. We're going to use our get access two times And for the first one, we'll look for the hor horizontal axis. And we'll make a variable for it. We'll just call it h. And we'll look for the vertical axis. And we'll make a new variable for it. Call it v. Now using these two axes, we can use a translate function of the transform class and we can move on the X dependent upon the horizontal and the Y dependent upon the vertical. Alright so with that done let's hit play. <clears throat> and as I press the A key and the D key it moves left and right W and S up and down. So that's the way we've done things so far. I'll go ahead and set this to something standardized like an iPhone 5. Alright, so while this function does work, and you know, no one can say that, you know, get access is not useful. Let's go ahead and set a multiplier here. Uh, when we're using uh, this as a, a mobile game, it's not really going to work with the get axis. So what we need to do is uh, have some on-screen controls for mobile devices. Now, in the uh, Playmaker, or sorry, in the Control Freak add-on, which you'll find if you drop down the plugins folder. you will see two different folders here. One is Control Freak, one is Control Freak 2. We're going to be using the classic Control Freak. So we'll go inside of 
Um, actually, it's even it's set down here to the control freak presets. Now, if we look at these presets, there are different control uh, schemes, I guess, different control schemes for each type of uh, game you may have. Um, some of these, or all of these, are pre-built to automatically kind of have a default layout for those types of games. The one we're going to use right now is just a CF platformer three buttons. And if I drag this into my scene, it doesn't look like anything happened. But if I switch over to my game view, you'll see that it actually has incorporated these controls automatically. And if I select the prefab in my hierarchy and look inside of the inspector, I can change any of the attributes for these different uh, controls. I can go into the sticks section, change the name of this stick if I so desire. I can change the the images that are used to anything I uh, choose. So if I if I want to, I can make this to be this white one. Let's see, the four-way outline would be this one, and this one, and the stick, this one, and this one. So just that quickly, I integrated some different images instead of the default ones for my little controller. I think I have them backwards, actually. So let's do the, yeah, one's base, one's cap. I put them backwards because, you know, I'm a genius like that. There we go. That should be better. Yeah, so very simply, we have a new controller. But as you can see, this controller is not controlling anything in regards to the movement of the box. And the reason is that these... Uh, the Control Freak add-on uh, uses different functions. Um, well, they're not different functions. They're actually extensions of existing functions. Um, but uh, all we need to know is that we have to tell the player to not look at the standard Unity axes. We need to actually uh, look for the Control Freak axes. Alright, so inside of Playmaker we added those those control freak actions with the uh, package imported earlier so instead of using get axis we can do another search for cf control freak and we can see that control freak has its own um, collection of functions now the one we're going to use is get cf axis so get axis but get control freaks axis use two of those and it's the same thing so for horizontal store that in H and for vertical store that in V and everything else we can leave the same now when we hit play we can see that this controller now controls the box. So we can use this for any kind of mobile application. Now inside of the CF platformer prefab we can also go over here and look at the touch zones. The touch zones are the different buttons. Okay, So we can go inside of these and maybe for this platformer uh, control, let's say maybe whenever I hit the uh, the B button, it destroys itself for the player, sorry. Alright, so we'll go to get CF button down. And let's see, if we get fire one, 
which again if I select these buttons and go through here I can see the names of them. Alright, Fire 1 is the button A. Fire 2 is the button B. So what we want to look for is button B. Alright, so I'll go down here and I'll look for Fire 2. And the event that I'll send, I haven't created yet. So, destroy self, add a state, add a global tra transition for destroy self. And over here, I change my send event to destroy self. So this will incorporate using that button, B, as an event. So let's hit play and give it a test. Alright, so move, 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 move. And when I press B, this object should be destroyed. And it is. Alright, that's it. It's that simple. You would think it would be more complex, but it's not. Alright, so that sums up this one. I uh, hope you learned something, and I'll see you later.